Hi, I'm Dan Dagg, president of H2 Accelerator. We're a marketing consultancy business based in Victoria with a staff of 17, and we work with clients all over the island. At H2, we combine clear and strategic thinking, creativity, and advanced technology to solve challenging problems and accelerate growth for our clients. I'm confident that you've been influenced by some of our work for clients such as Coastal Community Credit Union, the Nanaimo Hotel Association, Tourism Ecula, the City of Duncan, and of course our favorite brand, Island Good. If you'd like to learn more about some of the advanced mobile targeting and digital marketing tools we use to connect brands with customers, stop by our virtual booth. And so we all know the importance of buying local. The pandemic's made that abundantly clear. Now more than ever, we need to collaborate and support our island communities. It's my pleasure to present to you Island Good Recipes for Success. Hi, uh, my name is Dan Dag, and uh, I'm the moderator for this session, Island Good Recipes for Success. Um, I'm going to start by uh, introducing our panelists quickly, and then I'm going to give you an overview of uh, what we've been up to uh, the last year with Island Good. So uh, we have a great panel today. We have Dave McIntyre from Fierce Fish, Paul Gill, the owner of Sutra Foods, J. Marie Takahashi of Two Crows Craft Foods, Carol Deerham, Hardy Boys Smoke Fish, Sharon Hooten, of Woodfire Spice. Unfortunately, um, Israel Abiras Mondlina was not able to make it, but we do have Jessica Duncan from Singing Bowl Granola and Martha Barber from Martha's Delex Delectables. Uh, thank you all for um, participating. Uh, as you see, I'm in marketing, so I've prepared my little overview in the theme of a recipe for success. That's Island Good. So, just by way of a little bit of history, you know, the concept of an island consumer brand had been bantered around the boardroom table for about 10 years uh, until we finally got a, a foothold in it and started moving forward. Once we conceived of it, it took us a year to set it up. And we did a um, six month test case uh, with uh, multiple grocery stores and a bunch of um, products and services and, and uh, at the end of that we had terrific results and we went into the real world with it which meant we needed to start um, selling licensees getting people to pay for it and and roll it out um, the program is pretty simple it's got three ingredients uh, products that are grown and or processed on Vancouver Island services that are situated on Vancouver Island and provide island products to consumers and consumers wishing to support island goods. Cooking instructions. Well, this is really what we want it to do if it, if it rises properly. We will, you know, our goal is to increase the number of licensees that participate, um, to increase sales of island good products through promotions and point of sale materials. And then really importantly is we wanted to measure sales variances annually to make sure that it was working or not. And I think we're one of the only organizations um, that does that, that has empirical data to quantify our successes. So we do annual tracking year over year in three grocery store chains, Country Grocer, Quality Foods, and 49th Parallel that's 15 stores reporting in on the sales results of the Island Good brand. So I'm really happy to say that we've had phenomenal success with this concept. Um, that when we started the idea of this, we were hoping for maybe a five to 10% lift in sales. And our test case delivered an average increase in sales of 16.4%. Uh, over the six month period. Uh, that's pretty terrific. The following year uh, was an interesting one. We were just getting started. We went from zero licensees to um, just collecting a few, but even still sales were good. I mean, they went up about 1%. 
And then this interesting thing happened that we thought would be our, our the death of us. And that was uh, the pandemic and shutdowns and shortages. And uh, as it turned out, it was a boom for buying local and uh, the Island Good brand. And this last year, we saw an increase of 37.8% uh, in sales year over year for Island Good products, which is just amazing. We also measure the number of licensees that participate in this program. This is a, this is a kind of a, a member-driven program and our strength relies on how many people are participating. So we started with no licensees. By January 2020, we had 36. By the middle of that year, we got to 61. And then we jumped to 110. And as at June uh, 2021, we had 165 licensees on board. These are paying licensees to be part of this as they see the benefit in it. So a quick summary, we're averaging about 10 new licensees per month. We're averaging about a 23.7% increase in average annual sales year over year. And um, the products themselves are witnessing anywhere from 23.7% increases in sales to 400% and even more, some reporting increases of over a thousand percent. Before I conclude, I just want to give a big um, shout out and a thank you to our, um, our grocery store partners, Country Grocer, Quality Foods and the 49th Parallel uh, for supporting our qualitative research uh, endeavor. Without them sharing sensitive sales stayed out with us, we wouldn't know whether we're doing well or not. And as they always say, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. So uh, thank you to them for helping us do our job really well. And now I'd like to just uh, begin with uh, talking to our panel. So let's, um, let's talk. So uh, again, welcome everybody. I'm going to start with a, a question that I'm going to pose and have you all um, answer, uh, if you could, for, for me. Um, I'd like you all to tell us a little bit about how and when you got involved with Island Good and what successes um, you may have seen out of your involvement. And I'm going to ask for a volunteer to go first. I can go first. <laughs> thanks, Martha. Ah, thanks, Dan. Um, I guess uh, for Martha's Delectables, we, we joined up with Island Good about a year ago. And uh, thanks to Jessica Duncan that's on here as a guest with us. And she introduced us. And I thought, okay, this sounds re really good. So we joined. And uh, it's been wonderful ever since. We've had such a great connection with Island Good and other licensees. Um, we've benefited with our brand recognition it's increased substantially um, and the connections that we've made as a licensee with other businesses um, and all up and down the island has been fantastic um, and uh, and it's opened many more doors for us as a small business on the island so um, i just see it growing more from here and uh, expanding um, and I feel consumers too can feel good about purchasing our product, knowing that it's a local product through Island Good. So the identification there is wonderful. That's great. Thank yeah. you very much. You're welcome. Who else would like to go? Hi, Dan. I'll go. Thanks, Dave. So I'm, uh, I'm relatively new to the Island Good family. My wife uh, discovered Island Good in that so many people that she was following with marketable products from Vancouver Island through social media were already signed on with Island Good. And that's how it was brought to our attention. So we have a business, Fierce Fish Fermented, Fierce Fish Fertilizer. And uh, a lot of the people associated with Island Good are food products and distribution and grocery stores who we are now collaborating with from anywhere from uh, supplying growers 
um, for products that they need to make their final value added products to grocery stores that are interested in picking up our line for consumer distribution. So our big success in the short period of time that we've been associated with the Island Good Family and part of it has really been with collaboration and opening a lot of new doors for us and introducing us to people that previously you could have been looking at huge timelines just to get in the right room with the right person and uh, have that kind of a conversation and Island Good opens these doors so quickly and uh, then assists us along the way as well through collaborators and people in the board of directors. So we are, uh, we are extremely happy. Um, we'll wait and see how this does with sales, with growing because the collaborations are coming in very quickly. And uh, at this time, it's all we can do to just, just keep up with that. Oh, you're on mute, Dan. <clears throat> there, I just you didn't hear me swear um, <laughs> because I was muted. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask, you're the second person that's mentioned opening doors. Um, so just comment a little bit more about that. What does that look like? Introductions, introductions. Island Good has some really excellent backing with grocery stores and incredible collaborations that are already apparently some of them years in the making. And uh, I mean, some of them were, uh, I've spoken to a number of grocery stores that in the past um, could have been six months to try to get a conversation with the right person. And I think, I think 49 parallel, it was like two days from somebody, uh, Suzanne with Island Good saying, Hey, you should speak to these people to having these people call me on my cell phone, you know, literally like 48 hours and go, Hey, we're interested. You've been recommended. Um, tell us about your product. What can we do together? That's that's fantastic. Paul, you were going to jump in next. Yes, um, I wanted to mention that uh, we, we got involved also because of one of your members that uh, talked about Island Good so much. And once we uh, dug a little deeper, we found out that our, our broker and, uh, and the company that we manufacture our product at, our Butis Farms Kitchen, and uh, Jade Fine Foods, uh, companies that we work with, they're also Island Good companies that promote the spirit of what we are doing. I have, I have two words that I think uh, Island Good has uh, um, accentuated itself is, put itself on the pedestal right now is logistics and love. I think that part of our sales uh, for our products, and I'm, I wanna show off my bag here if I can to the camera. I don't know if I can get a good picture of it, but. I got the Island Good logo. I don't know if you can really see it, but forgive me if that was not a good image, but you'll see our bags at Thrifties. And you mentioned about opening doors. I really feel that uh, Thrifties took us more seriously uh, when, when we were an Island Good brand and that we were uh, following, following uh, the, the direction that I think all of these corporate stores are looking for too. You have to think of logistics for them too. And, uh, and again, we've all said it so many times, the pandemic really highlighted it, but uh, it also brought forth what uh, Martha had said earlier, people support our products. Uh, the island people, just think in yourself, when you go shopping, wouldn't you like to know that your product was made here by island people? And when I say island people, and now this is kind of, you know, going, going out there a little bit, we have to be careful not to, uh, you know, blow our own horns. Uh, to say, but uh, we have to bring to light that everyone is very happy here. And when you're making products, especially food, and you're happy, uh, I think it's not a secret anymore that that transpires into the food. So we are eating a better product. And so I really believe in the Island Good. And I feel like the team of people that's behind it, just like uh, Dave said about their networks of connections, I completely agree. And that's why I was nodding. So I, I, uh, I want to be like Jessica 
and get more people to understand that this is the recipe for success. Just as you said, Dan, the recipe is to align yourself with other people who are on the similar uh, path as you and similar goals as you. So I, I'm a true believer and hope to wave the flag of uh, Island Good for forever. Thank you. Thank you for having us, by the way, Dan. Yeah. Th thank you, Paul. I liked what you said there. and You called it logistics and love. Um, who wants to go next? Jessica? Hi, I'm the biggest cheerleader there is um, for <laughs> Island Good. So I first noticed it when you first rolled out the pilot project program in the various stores and I got a hold of the little decals and went around to all my stores and made sure I it was island good and then I got the results from that first pilot that like the bit the jump in sales so that was super exciting and um and then I there's kind of a blur between that and becoming a licensee but about this 24 hours after becoming a licensee um, I spoke to George about how do I get into quality foods because who was it said could take up to six months to, you know, get in touch with the right person and I'd certainly been trying and I was in quality foods because I was now recognized as an island good pro uh, product. So, um, you know, definitely the connections, the brand recognition, all the things that um, everybody else has said so far have been great for me. Um, the main thing I would say though is it's not so lonely because we're all sitting in our places working our butts off trying to do all the jobs and market and um, do it all right and I bet none of us were trained for this so having a community of everybody else doing it together with everybody else and having island good help promote our products and get the brand recognition and i don't know it just the community aspect for me has just been an absolute winner so. yeah that's great thank you very much who wants to jump in go ahead <laughs> thanks sharon Hi, um, yes, thank you for having me. Um, so my company, Woodfire Spice, joined Island Good quite early on. It was January um, of, <clears throat> excuse me, 2020. So it was just really starting to get going. And uh, we were very naive. We have a restaurant which was, you know, growing in leaps and bounds, doing very well. And we produced these um, spice blends and thought, well, this will be easy. We just go to the stores and get them to get them in. And it wasn't easy. We learned that spice blends are one of the most competitive markets out there. And the language that we knew from restaurants didn't transpire to retail stores and talking to um, grocery managers. And, and it was a lot harder. It was very humbling. And actually, Gloria Hatfield from Pages Resort Marina introduced us. She'd just become a, a licensee retailing Island Good products. Um, and it really did do, as everyone else has said, it really opened doors. It provided a way in, you know, that you could have the glossed over look from the grocery store managers um, and, you know, kind of, uh, this is just another person, but when you started to mention Island Good, their eyes lit up, and I found that increasingly so. And as a result, we got in all, pretty much all of the country grocers up and down the island very quickly, and that really helped us. Um, but it's also given us other opportunities. Um, we haven't mentioned things like Order Retriever, where you know all of our Island Good products are able to be accessed by a, a, a wide range. Well, from from anywhere, really. Um, and, and I think that's an, an, an aspect that we haven't yet touched on is, you know, for for um, our products to be able to seen be, be seen by a much wider audience in so many different ways. It's been the Island Good Days. It's been, the, you know, uh, products at the BC ferry terminals this past summer, 
order retriever with these beautiful gift boxes that you know people can can buy from anywhere in the world and access our, our products, I believe, um, you know, and, and as well as everything that we've already talked about. So I think it really does open doors. And I agree with Jessica that the networking opportunities, um, both to see each other's products, use each other's services, but also feel that connectivity and that support is, is so valuable. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's that's a, a great story. And I do remember you coming on in the very early days. And I'm so happy now because I was I do travel around. I see you in more and more grocery stores all the time. Yep. Thank you. Um, I like to go. <laughs> who's going next? I'll go next. Um, Thanks. So we started Hardy Boys Smoked Fish in 1994. And when you've been sort of in the food manufacturing business as long as we have um it's nothing's changed like it's been a challenge i think 27 years ago it's just as much of a challenge today to get your products in front of the right people and to get them on the store shelves so when you have been doing this as long as we have you recognize any opportunity for help and when I saw the Island Good, um, you know, logo popping up in grocery stores and did some Google and some research and found out exactly what it was. I mean, for the membership fee that you pay and everything that it gives, um, as a food manufacturer, any help that you can get, um, you just, you have to take it. Um, it uh, you know, it just, it really, it, it does open doors. It's the networking and also the people at Island Good, they're passionate. It's obvious that everyone there is super passionate about what they're doing and they work very hard. And in this business, um, that's what we all share. We're all very passionate about what we do and we definitely all work very hard. And we wear many hats. And I think anytime you find like minded people that you can surround yourself with and get behind a same cause, then that's a recipe for success. And you need to align yourself with that. Yeah. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Marie, I think you might be our last. I, I am. Um, I came to Island Good very recently. Uh, I'm actually a really new business that just started up this summer, Two Crows Craft Foods, and it was Chef Israel who led me to Island Good, actually, watching his social media and everything that Amy puts into it and advertising and um, seeing that it was something that was super accessible for small businesses like me that were just, you know, me and my kid doing the thing was exciting. Uh, over the course of the summer, it's been really interesting. Like order retriever was fantastic. I had deliveries to do up in Ruxton Island and that led to sales in Gabriola that led to order retriever doing a hilarious delivery to a brewery in Nanaimo for pickup for Gabriola. And it's been fantastic with him then taking the products to the ferries and knowing how hard he's working behind the scenes to develop a supply chain network and to create more opportunities to go not just along the island, but over to the mainland as well. Um, I'm also finding a lot of success when I'm approaching retailers. I know Pepper's Fine Foods is one where I went in and he was a little skeptical, a little, you know, I was like, oh, and I'm Island Good branded. And immediately the response was, I'll take a case of each. And it's, it's led to some really good relationships that way. And even with the businesses that are a little slower to embrace the mustard, that Island Good branding carries weight and has value. And it's something that I'm incredibly proud of to be recognized as an island producer. Uh, it also allows me as a producer who relies heavily on sourcing local ingredients to create my products. I know I can look across the Island Good family and whoever I reach out to, I'm going to have somebody there to help support what I'm doing, what I need, and to ensure that I'm getting the best and most beautiful ingredients on the island to create the mustard. Yeah, that's that's great. It's a terrific story, and uh, and Island Good um, pro products and producers sourcing other Island Good stuff. Um, 
that's been made easier as a as a result of this, hasn't it? Because I I think in just our preparatory meeting a couple of weeks ago, I saw a deal being done uh, as we were getting ready for this. So I think that's great. Um, so we know that um, that uh, it's opened some doors uh, for you. That there's some brand awareness and stuff like that. I'm not sure what you were expecting when you entered it into this and joined, but can anyone tell me like whether were there some unexpected benefits of joining Island Good that that you guys saw? I Marie. can't. Um, yeah, as a, as a new startup, it I assumed it was just kind of a branding thing, and oh, I've got this logo, and that'll signal to you know customers that I'm Island Good. I wasn't expecting all of the emails with the various opportunities that pop up and oh, this grocery store is looking or we have this uh, opportunity at the airport or whatever it is. I wasn't expecting so much support in helping to grow and develop my business and opportunities. Really appreciate it. Yeah. So I'm just going to follow up with that and put it to the group. Um, how many of you have sort of participated in um, some of the promotions and opportunities that have come around and just maybe tell us just anyone who wants to go tell me what promotions you jumped in on well uh, we, Martha? we we um we were thrilled to be part of the uh the promotion out at the ferry terminals mm -hmm. and to have all the island good products and one one presentation was so exciting to see and uh and the traffic flow to and from the island is so much exposure for everyone. Uh, that was that was one that was really wonderful this summer to partake in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was great. Like, and that was just yeah. Island Good was able to organize that. There was no was there was no cost to you, was there? No, no, no. no. And they look after so many of the details for us, which as busy business owners is much appreciated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And as Marie said there too, that um, we didn't, we entered into Island Good not really knowing what to expect, but it's just been fabulous on opportunities like the ferry terminals and um, and so many of the finer details being looked after, and the uh, um, to be said like you know we're looking after this, we want to do this project in the future, and we want you on board for this project. It's like wonderful opportunities that we might not have otherwise had. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's great. I think great. Too, cool. Sorry, I, I think too, um, you know, in business, recognize like marketing can get quite expensive. And just the amount of work and, you know, the social media and the cross promotions and how it's expanded the audience, um, you know, those are costs that we alone as a business, you know, many small to medium businesses would struggle to be able to come up with that type of a budget. But, you know, just having Island Good taking that on and really like pushing everything forward is it's a huge bonus. Mm -hmm. um, Jessica, were you going to say something? Yeah, um, like Martha, we participated in the ferry terminal. Um, one of the highlights for me was um, Mark would re report back that all the people who were saying, oh, I know uh, singing bull granola. And of course, once it leaves my, my facility, I have no idea who's buying it. So that was really fun getting that feedback. But um, also what Carol's saying about doing the promotion and stuff. So, you know, if Paul does a little promo of his product that says Island Good, um, his mm -hmm. customers, See, then see Island Good on my box. You know, yeah. they're going to make that connection. So it's not just the Island Good followers, it's the followers of all of our all of our followers yeah. who are interconnecting and getting on board. So um, yeah, it's a real web that's just far reaching and yeah. very useful for all of us. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, and you know, I, I'm gonna say this. For, for the audience and who may not know, but um, you know, Island Good is uh, run by a not-for-profit organization, and all of not all, but seventy-five percent of the licensing fees 
go into uh, promotional marketing. Uh, there's a small amount of the, the fees goes to administration to provide the support that you guys are talking about. And we've been able as a, as a not-for-profit organization to um, leverage that status into some really good um, television and radio promotions in which um, Island Good pays half and then we get a, a bunch of the licensees to contribute and all of a sudden we have a really big impact out there. It's been very successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other um, sort of thoughts around benefits of the program, camaraderie? Mm -hmm. I've actually, if, sure. if I can, uh, I think it was Jessica that mentioned earlier on that, uh, especially now as an independent business person, there are so many days where you have to wear so many different hats. You've got so many tasks to do from marketing to production to delivery is, you know, and one thing that I have noticed is it's easy to get a little bit burnt out and it's really, really nice to have people supporting you at that time and helping to lift you back up again when you have days that you are just going, I'm wiped. I've got nothing left to give and you can pick up the phone or quickly shoot an email and be like, is there anything that you can do to help me with this or get me together with these people? Because I just don't have the energy to try to coordinate this run. And, uh, and, and that's been something that I have benefited from and I'm incredibly grateful for because it, it does. And I mean, we need to save energy for ourselves and our families and our health, especially and uh, it's just nice to be able to have people to, to you know, a support system to fall back on um, in whatever it may be. Uh, last week, I was introduced to somebody that was contracted in to coordinate two amazing, amazing brand new distribution hubs, one in Port Alberni and a brand new one that just opened for the Parksville Qualicum Beach era. And I believe had their open house just last Thursday. Um, because logistics is one of the most energy expending things mm -hmm. that somebody that has their own product uh, has to deal with is shipping. Yeah. You know, the logistics of getting things to the people that are purchasing your product on time to the right place at the right time in good, good, in good shape. And uh, Island Good is, has aligned with uh, uh, these two hubs. And I think there's quite a few other ones that I, I'm sure there are that I don't even know about. But, uh, but being in my area, the, uh, the, the Port Alberti one and the Parksville Qualicum one are huge. In which case now they have this, this incredible backing of uh, uh, chambers of commerce with these hubs that uh, are you know, storing people's products, giving them places to help manufacture their products, helping them with the delivery of their products and uh, taking a huge amount of load off by doing that. So yeah, I'm very grateful for that aspect. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks, Dave. Sharon, you were about to say something, weren't you? Yeah, um, basically uh, pretty much what Dave said. I think it's that, that networking. I was um, approached by someone a few weeks ago and um, looking at our individual products to go in a big new store and exciting opportunity. And at the end of the conversation, um, literally as we were talking exactly what Dave was saying about the logistics and the, the wheels are spinning in my head and I'm thinking, how can I possibly get that product over to Vancouver um, cost effectively, you know, and there were some, some challenges to be had. Um, you know, in my mind, I then turn and think to Island Good, and I actually brought that up with with the with the gentleman I was talking to. Didn't even know about Island Good was was uh, not based in this area, and was thrilled to hear that there was, uh, you know, an umbrella of uh, all these amazing um, suppliers, uh, producers, uh, growers. Um, that as an outsider looking to create a store that was very um, local, you know, containing only local products, could reach out to this one place and see all these products under, under one, you know, 
roof, as it were. And, and he was beyond excited about that um, because it made it easy from their point of view uh, to, to, to find these products, just as it makes the consumer, it makes it easier for the consumer um, to find, you know, our products in the stores. So mm -hmm. that was an exciting opportunity. Yeah, that's great. Let's go on to another um, topic for, for a minute. So um, you're all um, small entrepreneurs and uh, uh, producers, processors uh, of island products. And I know that in our audience, uh, there will be other people like you just getting started, some maybe further along the road. What advice or learnings um, would you like to share with those, um, those folks to help them along the road? And uh, I'm going to start with Jessica. because Don't reinvent the wheel. You don't need to. There's so much. There are, there's community. We've all been there. We've all found our wholesalers and the person to talk to at this store and where to get our packaging and all. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Reach out. Island Goods is a great place to find everything you need. That's it. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, Martha. Hi. Um, I I just say to have patience. Mm -hmm. Have patience with with people around you and potential customers. Have patience with yourself. Everyone's been through so much through the pandemic that um, we have to stop and realize that businesses are evolving constantly and we can't be too hard on ourselves or the people that we associate with because we've all had to learn to be flexible mm -hmm. and to think outside the box more and come up with brand new ideas and maybe alter the way that business is done. Um, so just have patience and enjoy what you're doing, love what you're doing. And as you navigate, um, be positive and keep your chin up. Thanks. That's great advice. Anyone else want to? Yeah, Marie. I, uh, I was hesitant initially to approach other businesses and other business owners asking for help. And I found that people are incredibly kind and willing to, to provide you with those resources, those wholesalers, the guy who's making the good labels, all of that. And I think it's just, uh, it's important to have that confidence and, uh, and be brave and ask for the help you need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, let me um, let me ask this question. Um, so you guys were in most of you were in business pre COVID. Uh, and now you're been successful in COVID. We, we've heard a lot about the um, increasing consumer des to desire to support local and just how important that is. Have you is is that have you guys witnessed that? And is there any stories you can tell me uh, about that? We Dave. we hear it from time to time. We hear it quite often. People have steered their direction completely from their normal buying purchases and habits to focusing entirely on local. Um, whether it's for Christmas or any other time of year. They're buying gifts for other people just from local stores and um, franchises and and their focus is entirely on local. Some have made that their staple go to now is just local product. Um, yeah, I would, I would like to add to that. That's what Martha is saying too. that people have shifted. Uh, for example, in my business, my competition was uh, jarred sauces that come from all over the world, uh, like Pateks. And, uh, and then uh, I was even competing with uh, Vikram Vijis uh, sauces and, and Indian food. And just the fact that we're the uh, island, an island made product, uh, right now we happen to be the only Indian sauce, but it, it, the, the island brand uh, logo definitely drew people to, uh, to our brand at the grocery store shelves. Definitely. 
Yeah, that's great. Go ahead, um, Jessica. So yeah, the mid March 2020, my sales went through the roof. And um, I was the commitment by people on the island to support local is just phenomenal. So um, something I started doing in March 2020, and I'm still doing is I put what we call little love letters in our boxes. So every few mm -hmm. weeks, I mix it up. And just at first, it was thank you so much for supporting us. You know, we're real people. And you're supporting local islanders. Um, now I do the territorial acknowledgement, which kind of feels like the right thing to do. But I just wanted to make that human connection with my customers who are obviously going out of their way to support my business. A, because it's a great business, I hope, but also because it's an island good business. So yeah, that's, that's it. That's, that's great. So it seems to me, you know, like Island Good is is really still in its infancy, right? It's been around three years, mm -hmm. um, but the the concept is is proven, right? It's working, it's growing. Um, where do you guys see? What would you? What can you see for Island Good and those that participate in Island Good? in another in in another five years right what would you like to see well um especially because of what we're seeing on the news with these logistic issues and all this you know the, the world's obviously changing very fast maybe even faster than we can even imagine and uh i i think island good is going to become a, a very important topic and i i joked once with uh one of your members about uh that wouldn't it wouldn't it be great to have a a warehouse that says island island only <laughs> you know and uh where where you know that there's only products like for example the the place that was at the ferry terminal this summer uh, a larger place where there's only island good products available like a costco but a mini version only for island made products i i see that in the future yeah that's that's interesting, and one of the one of the um, the uh, points that we raised in, when we were trying to get this off the ground is is uh, food security is very topical and should be a concern. And and there's a stat that says uh, in the event of a catastrophe, we have enough food in the supply chain here on Vancouver Island to last three days, uh, which means we we need to work on that. Yeah. So, oh, sorry. Um, Go ahead, to Carol. Add to, to add to where, you know, we might want to see Island Good go to in the next five years, um, Island Good's done a great job promoting itself to the manufacturers, to the businesses. The, um, you know, the food producers on the island are definitely more and more aware of Island Good all the time. Maybe the next step could be more of um, a campaign towards consumers themselves. I mean, how many people on Vancouver Island are not exactly aware of what Island Good is? They see it in the grocery store, but maybe don't know exactly what it means and who they're supporting or, you know, the background story. And because Vancouver Islanders do want to support local and local isn't just local in their community local is Vancouver Island as shopping local Vancouver Island is one area. One yeah. big family. <laughs> yeah, I, I completely agree with you and and uh, you know when we first tested this we didn't run a big campaign because we wanted to see whether um just knowing that a product was from the island was enough to mm -hmm. increase sales and and it was and we've been trying to put together um uh consumer awareness promotions uh, once um or twice a year if possible um you know unfortunately we're we, we get zero government funding right we we do this whole thing on our membership fees and a mm -hmm. bunch of volunteers um and um uh, i'm i'm hoping that sometime in the near future that um 
the provincial and federal government will recognize the the value that we contribute economically and to uh, to society, really, in terms of our mm -hmm. security and environmental issues, um, and give us the hand that that we deserve, that you guys deserve mm -hmm. as entrepreneurs here on Vancouver Island. Um, if I may just expand on what Carol's mentioned, Dan, I think that's really a good idea and possibly expansion of brand awareness um, through taking advantage of how the 165 licensees could possibly help in that way. Um, I guess with no funding, but possibly with everything that we ship out, right? Um, helping yeah. that brand awareness become even bigger for for island good and yeah. so <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah I, mean, I know there's well, lots I of think... i was just gonna say there's lots of government um grants out there for industry whether it's like the blueberry industry or you know specific industries um you know it'd be nice to see the government open the grants to an organization such as island good i absolutely agree like i think we should Definitely, uh, you know, yeah. see what we can do there. Sure. Jessica, did you have something? Yeah, um, it's probably a pipe dream, but I'd love to see um, Island Good designated distribution service. So um, I think we all struggle getting our the logistics taken care of, you know, mm -hmm. our products from A to B. Mm -hmm. And um, it's hard to come across uh, distributors that will make it viable for you financially right so mm -hmm. um again the whole collective um working together maybe somehow somewhere in the future we can mm -hmm. do distribution for our own good yeah. products yeah and i think that's a really um terrific idea and i think it's also important to note that when we created the island good brand it, you know the intent has always been to work on on several sides you know one is the demand side right we need to make sure that consumers are aware of and buying island products um so the and the other is to help on the su supply side and that's helping you folks uh, with things that you can't afford to do on your own so let's leverage our cumulative strengths to secure um, better distribution um, services and processing equipment that we might not be able to afford individually and that sort of stuff and and that you know that's all i hope going to happen in in the future as we move along and, and grow and you know the fact is that um it uh it's it's the licensees um brand and program and will do whatever they want to do or whatever helps them do that so um again thank you all for um coming out and participating we're going to now um open it up to the audience to ask some questions so uh please um stay on and uh, let's uh, open it up to questions. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to start um, actually by I had a few requests that um, our panelists uh, didn't get a chance to actually identify themselves. Um, so um, I'm, can you guys just do a, quickly around the circle and so people can put a face to uh, a name and, and a company? Um, hi, I'm, I'm Martha Barber, um, co-founder of Martha's Delectables here in Victoria, BC. And we have, um, um, mostly wholesale bakery um, and our signature product is our uh, premium Scottish shortbread and for delicious flavors and um, we have some amazing clients and um, yeah happy to bake and we um, for anyone we ship out 
all around the province. Um, and uh, we have some great supporters abroad and um, lovely people we work with on the island, particularly. And um, uh, sh shortbread is our, our signature product, but we do have a host of, of other baked goods. Thank you. Thanks. Jessica? I'm Jessica Duncan. I'm the owner of Singing Bowl Granola. Uh, we've been in business for 10 years, 10 and a half years. And I've also started another uh, business called Treat Yourself Treats, which is using the granola in chocolate treats. And um, gosh, we are, I don't know what to say. <laughs> we make amazing products. We, I like to call it uh, granola for social justice because we're very involved in feeding our community, helping schools feed their students, um, donating to the food bank and contributing financially wherever we can to causes close to our own hearts. So uh, that's, that's me, that's my business and nice to see y'all. Uh, Carol. Hi there, um, Carol DeRome. My husband Bruce and I, we created Hardy Boys Smoked Fish in 1994, uh, originally as a service provider for the sport fishing community. And that has grown and evolved over the years into a fairly automated uh, manufacturing facility. We specialize in hot smoked salmon, candied salmon jerky, we value add seafood products and we offer private label custom processing um, distribution through uh, into grocery stores under private label as well as our own brand. Um, yeah, and uh, we employ about 50 people year round and we operate here in Port Hardy on the northern tip of Vancouver Island. Thanks, Sharon, why don't you go next? Hi, I'm uh, Sharon Hooten, and along with my husband, Chris Hooten, we own uh, Woodfire Restaurant and Woodfire Spice Company. Um, the spice company was born out of uh, basically Chris creating these amazing um, chef-inspired spice blends for our restaurant um, items, menu items. And from there, we decided to take it into the retail market. And the idea is that you too can create, you know, such amazing food uh, with the help of these easy to use spice blends. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Marie. Did we do you yet? No. So I'm Marie Takahashi. Me and my uh, kids run Two Crows Craft Foods. We've started out with uh, coarse ground mustard. So we're sourcing 100% Canadian mustard now and working on negotiating contracts with Blackfoot territory uh, in the future. And then everything we season with is produce and other ingredients that we can get from the island. We use Damali lavender for our lavender mustard. Uh, we're using a West Coast organics for our pickled jalapeno mustards. And then as the season allows, we do other fun things. We managed to forage 15 quarts of blackberries. So we're doing a blackberry mustard right now. And then as our access to supply chains and producers on the island grows, we will continue to grow our products and expand into whatever we can create with the best stuff we can find on the island. And that is, um, that's the best part about this is being able to support other local producers. Thanks, who are we missing? Dave. Okay, so if all uh, you all know who everybody is on the panel now, uh, we've had a slew of um, questions and comments come in. So um, I don't even know where to start. Um, but why don't we start with um, the big one um, uh, that was raised at this morning's keynote uh, by Dr. Charles Brois. Uh, I'm assuming as many of the panelists, were, were you there? No. So, Suzanne? 
Hello, everybody. Yes, I would love to jump in and introduce myself and thank all of the incredible panelists and moderator for a wonderful session. I am the Relationship and Business Development Manager with Island Good, and I have had the amazing opportunity to work with each one of these businesses and the opportunities um, that we have seen. I'm going to jump in and defend our Island Good and uh, throw an argument back to Dr. Charlebois because I was sitting there feeling defensive in my own little home, in my own little time, thinking that, you know what we do really good? We do collaboration, cooperation. We find a gathering place together and we are doing sustainability really well. And I thought Joe Perkin did a really great job of defending us. But I think, you know, whoever was on that session was probably sitting back going, oh, if I could jump in there, um, you know, there were some words that were brought up today, um, you know, I, and I am a wordsmith, I love words that really bring emotion and evoke that and it was logistics and love and patience and kindness and all these things that you know we really, that's what Island Good is, and the success is energy is the best currency and that is really going to drive us all forward. So my role is so rewarding and you know just to see all of the different projects coming to life you know Dave from Fierce Fish he mentioned the Deliver Vancouver Island distribution center that's opening up like that is one of those logistics that is going to be solved and you know that was funded by government Island Good hasn't seen any money from the government but we're not stopping and I just, you know, I really think um, there's opportunity for in 2022 when we get back to events, let's do it all locally. Let's get all these island good businesses providing your food and beverage, providing, you know, your swag bags, like, let's do it. Um, you know, we're unstoppable and we need everybody participating. We need the consumer. We need the vendor. Um, recently, an idea has come up about a public market that is there all the time that celebrates island good uh the bc fairies kiosk you know thank you everybody for sharing your experience of that because that is our audience um you know we're going to the moon who's coming with us yeah yeah thanks thanks suzanne um uh, anybody who wants to um, learn more about Island Good and, and how to engage, uh, reach out to Suzanne. She is like our ray of sunshine and works uh, so, so hard on all of our members' behalf. Um, I'm going to make a, a, a sort of add a little bit to that, that comments that Dr. Charbois made this morning. And, and so... He's a very, very smart man and, and does a lot of work across Canada. Um, but I think some of his comments were, um, were based on lack, lack of information and, and not understanding our strategy, right? And so um, I, I've worked on uh, regional and Western Canadian uh, brands uh, most, most of my career and, and have been involved in marketing for Island Farms Dairy, Thrifty Foods, Canada Safeway, McDonald's restaurants, and like Payless Gas, which is now bought by Shell. So I know a lot about building island brands and selling uh, Western Canada. And, um, you know, what we needed to do was um, create some traction and sell to our our own um, island consumer first and foremost. We were going for the low hanging fruit and, and that which was easily accessible. And the Island Good brand is a hit with island consumers. We don't have capacity to export. Most of our members would struggle to supply a chain like Thrifty Foods or Save On Foods. So, you know, there's a thing called the universe of potential customers, right? So we defined the universe of potential customers that would work for us in the short term. And when we get enough traction, when we evolve our, our supply side and our distribution side, then we can look at evolving a, a brand that's designed for export. But 
in my mind, it's it's working great. Panelists, would you agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so a few other questions. Um, one of the somebody's asked a question about what sorts of promotions and outbound marketing does Island Good do? Um, well, we do a, a, a number of different things. Um, so in the, in the digital and, and social realm, we have an always on social strategy. Uh, several times a year, we do um, social promotions um, to build awareness. Um, we develop um, some uh, consumer advertising. Uh, uh, because we're not for profit, we're entitled to a discounted rate with, uh, with the media. So we take that rate and then we add some of our dollars and then we'll, we'll add um, three of our members into that spot for a very minuscule fee. Uh, and by pooling our dollars, you know, we've been able to run campaigns in a, in a value of excess of $100,000, but to our members, there might be a a thousand dollar cost. So uh, those are a number of the, the consumer driven things. We also work and try and help um, all of our members get listings. We were recently approached by London Drugs who had heard about our brand and the great stuff we were doing. And they asked for a, a sample basket and a list of all the, the products that were our members. Uh, so we might be able to get us distribution there and that would be off island. So all of those things are, are happening. Um, I was also asked, um, and it was suggested that uh, we've missed a, a shout out to um, the economic development officers and, um, and municipalities that have jumped on board to support. Island Good, and, I, and I'm, uh, that's my fault. Um, a number of the municipalities, um, when COVID struck, came forward and bought group licenses for uh, businesses within their community to help them get through COVID. And, um, you know, without them, I don't think we'd be as strong as we are today. I think the, the link between what we're doing with Island Good and, and economic development um, needs to be noted, right? This was created uh, in order to create household sustaining jobs for people, right? And, and that's what we're doing. Um, what do we have additional? Um, are we ready to go to round table? No. All right, so let's then just um, continue with a few more questions. Um, and this will be to some of our pa panelists. Now, having sat through um, the, uh, the session that we recorded a little bit earlier, do you have things that you feel like you would have liked to have added to your comments? Anyone? I do. Go for it. Okay. Um, just thinking about the, I missed Mr. Charlebois um, presentation this morning, but just what I'm catching here, the importance of feeding our local community is so um, immeasurable. Uh, Dan, you mentioned previously about, um, you know, in the event of an emergency or a disaster, we've got three days worth of food here. And um, we need to keep that in mind constantly because we are getting more and more frequent disasters, emergencies. You know, we need to build a really robust um, food and supply community here. And that will only come through the support of others. And that I, I really 
I'm so grateful to Island Good for focusing on that and focusing on the islands and making sure everybody's in community and feeding each other. So um, yeah, that's super important. And thank you, Island Good for keeping that focus. Thanks. I think when we're looking at things, I, you know, Jessica, you had mentioned working with the food bank and other nonprofits. And it's something I, I look forward to do, you know, partnering with these nonprofits, especially um, within my personal political interests of supporting queer youth in particular and finding those organizations. And there's so much of a benefit to that with working with an organization that focuses on the island. You know, we're identified as island producers. It makes it easier for nonprofits to identify people they might be able to work with and to also really concentrate our dollars and our support for nonprofits within our direct community. And I think that is something that um, is probably grossly overlooked this morning, that, that community support and local supporting local. That's great. I have another question here that's um, just come in and, and uh, it, it goes, uh, what are some of the transportation and logistics challenges that island producers face in getting products to their destination? I think, oh, sorry. I, 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 <laughs> I think for us, I mean, what was interesting um, when, when we got on board the, the Island Good train, as it were, was, was that there potentially is a network for us all to streamline what we do. I mean, we're not quite there yet, but we're definitely heading in that direction. Um, you're all making these individual journeys down, you know, I live on Gabriola and I'm touting my, my business, uh, you know, down in Victoria and up the island. And we're all making these individual trips and we're all trying to seek out the right person to have the conversation with. And, and with Island Good, not only does that happen easier, um, more easily, but also I hope in the future, and we, you know, think it's getting there really, we're really close, is that we're not all shipping down to individual stores. We're not all kind of going to Canada Post or UPS or whatever and, and paying that, um, that shipping to get our products uh, into all these stores. There is the, 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 the networking and the distribution centers, both from our point of view to get our, you know, our, I mean, I'd love, you know, we can send our products to a warehouse and and they're shipped from there. And, you know, if Jessica and Carol have products at the same time, for example, argument say, you know, that, that makes it more cost effective on our end. But from the other end, from people accessing the products, it makes it a lot easier, um, you know, for them to, for them to logistically um, get them, but also be aware of them. That's great. Anyone else want to comment or can I, should I go to the next question? Well, I know with transportation and Gabriella in particular, I had to go to Nanaimo, camp overnight, ferry to the island, meet customers from Ruxton who, bless their hearts, voted over. Uh, and then in the process, I picked up a market in Gabriella. So then when I had to get product to them, it was order retriever showing up at my house at nine o'clock at night to pick up the mustard, to drive to Nanaimo, to leave at Wolf Brewing. So when somebody came over from Gabriella, they could pick it up. And I mean, it was hilarious and it worked and I'm really grateful for order retriever, but it's looking at that kind of issue and finding out ways that if I'm gonna go up island to go kayaking, I can pick up Jessica's stuff and deliver it at the same time. And then I'm struggling now with finding cost-effective ways of getting a very heavy product off the island. And I don't know how to do that for a, a fee that would not make the product cost prohibitive for the retailer. So it's, it's gonna be exciting to see how Island Good grows distribution and finds ways that we can network amongst each other to, to share the costs and the, the actual effort of transportation. Okay. That's, I wouldn't uh, mind to weigh in on that. Okay. That uh, we're going to listen to you. And then I want to revisit this uh, in a few minutes when we open it up to the round table. So but, but sure. go ahead, Carol. So logistics, it's, it's a huge piece when you have a perishable item, um, when you have something that 
leaves your facility frozen and has to travel quickly and um, must be kept at a temperature control. And you've got that whole cold chain and there's just like, there's just a whole host of other, other issues that go along with it. Um, it wasn't until we launched our non-perishable salmon jerky last year that we finally can ship a small amount to an individual. It was just completely cost prohibitive. Like there's, you know, especially where we are, we don't, I mean, it takes an entire day just to get to Nanaimo or where it's going to meet up with that ferry or that barge to get off the island. So, you know, within Island Good, I think when it comes to people with perishable items, it's, it's just a whole other stream of logistical issues to work out. Okay, that's great. Um, everybody, we're gonna, we're kind of entering the, the, the round table portion of, of our session. And so you're all welcome to turn on uh, your cameras and your mics will work, but let's leave them on mute until you have something that you want to say, if that's all right. And I'm going to do, I want to do two things. I want to just uh, get a, uh, I had a, a question and, and so it's to the panelists. Um, what do you need in the next 12 to 18 months or in the short term? You know, how can service providers Active organizations, local government, and other attendees help. Uh, yeah. uh, go, Jessica, and then oh, Martha. Uh, okay. Um, going to what Marie was saying, if Island Good could create a network, or if we could create a network where you know um, we're helping to distribute each other's products here and there. Um, you know, so say I'm sending stuff up to Nanaimo, I could go on the forum and say, hey, who's got room in to deliver up to Campbell River or Nanaimo or wherever. Um, something like that would be really, really helpful, I think. I think everyone will agree that logistics are the toughest bit. And um, just very quickly on that subject, I really want to show love to my distributor, BNC Foods. They are island-based and they have saved singing full granola. They have been just phenomenal. So everybody show them love and check them out if you're looking for a distributor. Thanks, yeah. Jessica. Martha? Um, I, I, com I completely agree with what Jessica just said. Uh, logistics with shipping product up and down the island to the Gulf Islands. Um, if, if things over time can be fine-tuned, we can rely on one another and Island Good support that way. I think it would be uh, help make things more efficient and shipping and the cost possibly, hopefully to be reduced too. The shipping uh, can be a, you know, quite a sore spot with, with people sometimes and the costs involved. Um, also, you know, it's non for profit island good, but um, possibly seeing some grants um, supported through island good uh, for small businesses, grant money um, in some way for the small business. And um, yeah, I think uh, that would help to, you know, people to flourish and uh, grow their businesses even more. That's, that's great. Hey, uh, Daryl, I, I see you've got your hand up. Do you want to comment or ask a question? Yeah, um, I guess maybe both, Dan, and thank you very much. Um, um, first of all, I'd like to congratulate all of the panelists on their success in helping build the Island Good brand. I was actually on the VAIA board when this idea was first introduced, and and hats off to everyone on in VAIA that took this forward. But I wanted to, I guess, explore one of the questions that Dr. Sherbino uh, in this morning's session brought up. And Dan asked earlier, sort of, where do you see this going, you know, moving forward, maybe five years from now? So is this something, in your opinion, that should be looked at 
figuring out a way to distribute the Island Good brand beyond Vancouver Island. Um, it would take, as a lot of you I understand are very are small producers, so it would it would take sort of taking your your business model to the next level. But is there is there an interest in taking this beyond Vancouver Island? That's my question, I guess, to the panelists. For me, there absolutely is, um, especially as I'm building, you know, relationships with Blackfoot territory and being able to work directly with indigenous, um, you know, nations and to be able to expand that. Uh, the mustard seed I'm buying from Blackfoot territory is more support going into that indigenous community and a larger conversation across the country about what we can access on, on treaty territories and unceded lands. Um, I also really love mustard and I, I want everybody to enjoy the mustard and um, there's some really good other mustard companies across the country and it's exciting to have that possibility of growing and being stuff alongside Kalavskis and things like that. Uh, it also, you know, I'm very smug about living here and I like bragging about the amazing things we have access to and the producers and everything that we do on the island is so unique given our environment um, to begin with. So I know I, I'm very keen to move off island. Um, so I'll just close that and then uh, there's probably a perfect segue into, um, Christopher, uh, but, um, you know, we've always viewed this as, uh, potentially, uh, turning to exports. You, you know, we live on, um, one of the most beautiful islands in the world, and it's constantly getting recognized as one of the top islands in in the Americas, and where else would you want your foods and goods to come from, you know? And it's been very successful for companies like Island Farms, right? In marketing on the, on the mainland, right? It's an island brand that has um, brand uh, characteristics that are attractive anywhere in the world. So I'm gonna ask uh, Christopher from Export Development Canada to um, say a few words. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Uh, and good, after good afternoon, everyone. Um, so again, my name is Christy Baraja with Export Development Canada. And EDC made the decision, decision last year to, to relocate me out to the island. So I'm based here in Victoria. Um, and to kind of piggyback on the comments made this morning by Dr. Charlebois, uh, and, and Dan, you nailed it earlier that, you know, capacity being an issue and, and kind of perfecting the machine on the island first. But I just wanted to provide some context because I am engaged with numerous agri-food food companies on the island uh, of all sizes. Um, and export doesn't necessarily always mean a big transaction, right? With e-commerce, the world has become an incredibly small place. Um, and there's companies that are approached all the time uh, via your online platform saying, hey, heard about your product, read about your product. Um, I want to buy some, you know, and selling that B2C, that's an export, right? And that's where the journey begins. Point being is I think that the Island brand good or Island good brand has been a phenomenal initiative. I think it's brought forth a lot of um, companies and, and a lot of you business owners collectively to a platform that allows you to um, display your, your product and there's going to be an evolution to that, right? Whether you're not, you have exports on your radar. And again, sending a packet of mustard seeds down to Blaine, Washington, that's an export, right? But the Vancouver Island brand has an incredibly amazing appeal outside of Canada. I'm just letting you all know that in my conversations with foreign buyers, uh, my teams across Canada and across the globe, the Island brand, Island food brand is well known and there's a demand for it. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but point being is that at some point, if you think I do wanna get off the rock, I do wanna grow my brand, I do wanna dip my toe in the water, there's resources. Um, Martha, you were mentioning about grants. We don't necessarily give up, <coughs> give up grants, but there's a part of the government that does look for grants out there. There's you know 160 grants that are floating around at any given time. Um, with ourselves, EDC, we're here to be a resource for you in that journey, talking about how do I export? What are my barriers of entry? 
organic doesn't necessarily mean the organic term in Canada isn't the same in other markets. So how do you how do you approach that? So I just wanted to quickly say that we are I am a resource here on the island. Uh, my information is public, and um, if you're a company that wants to have that discussion, <coughs> again, exporting maybe two years down the journey down the road for you, but let's start that journey conversation early and get you the right tools in place to start exploring that. So that's my, my two cents. Yeah, thanks, Christopher. I'm gonna um, go to Kevin Hawes from Cold Star, uh, who, a guy who knows a lot about shipping stuff up and down the island. Um, share with us. Yeah, yeah, sorry, it's Kelly Hawes. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry I didn't have it in there. No, that's okay, it's Kelly. Um, and I've been sitting here listening and going absolutely nuts because um, I, everything that everybody's talking about, I've been trying to solve a lot of these problems for the last 21 years. So um, bear with me a little bit here because I'm really excited. But um, so, you know, I, I live on the island based in Victoria, started our company with one truck 21 years ago, um, built up quite a big business um, distributing and now as a grocery wholesaler, for all of the independent retailers uh, on the island, but we also deliver to every grocery store on the island. But, and, and I'm gonna probably get myself in a little bit of trouble here, but my inside knowledge to the grocery industry is um, been driving me nuts because it, the industry on the island is broken, in my opinion. I think for island vendors to get into grocery stores and I'll pick on Sobeys and, and stuff, um, it's a, as you all know, it's a very cumbersome process. It's very difficult, especially now that they've moved their buyers to Calgary. Um, there's, it's expensive and on and on and on. So, um, so a little bit of a plug. So my son and I just started a new company um, called Because, B-C-A-U-S-E, um, which the whole thing is to create an e-commerce platform for vendors, but you maintain control of your product and stuff like that. Um, it's very, very different and with the proceeds of this going back to charity on the island and a whole bunch of things. But everything that I'm hearing, um, it, like uh, around fulfillment and warehousing and logistics, Cold Star can solve some of those problems, but not very many because we're dealing with grocery stores and big um in big volumes, so pallets and stuff. So I was trying to solve the solution of distribution for e-commerce and vendors, and hence why we've partnered and uh, with the Parksville Chamber of Commerce. And you'll now, you're, uh, it was mentioned earlier that Delvey Deliver Vancouver Island Fulfillment Center is just opened. Well, um, uh, sorry, because uh, is moving in there on Monday. Uh, this Monday coming up with our goal to actually with the partnership with Cold Star, the fulfillment center and the e-commerce platform uh, to try and solve so many of these problems and yet let the vendor stay in control of your product and pricing and but use the pooling. Um, so many times I've heard people saying that if we could all get organized and just ship all our stuff to Campbell River on the same day and pool that we could reduce all our costs. That's exactly what we're trying to solve here. Um, so, I, um, so I'm just sort of chomping at the bit to uh, reach out to everyone in Island Good because Island Good, I think, is a massive part of solving so many of these logistics challenges because it, it takes organization. Um, and we got, to, we got to collaborate and Susan and uh, myself and uh, my son Mitch have already uh, had a few discussions. We've also tomorrow have a large, um, or sorry, a um, discussion with the provincial government around grants to reduce food, food waste, increase uh, the, the ease of logistics for small business and island good vendors in particular. Um, and all of that money will go back into the organization to market in, you know, improve logistics and stuff like that. So I'm sort of rambling here a little bit, but um, but I'd love to be able to talk to everyone um, and understand all the pain points um, so that we can start to build those solutions. Um, I've been doing, like I say, I've been doing business on the island here a long time, and I'm very passionate about Vancouver Island. And this venture is all about giving back and trying to help startups 
I mentor probably 25 or 30 different startups at any given time. And I love that part. So my, please reach out to me and I'd be more than happy to brainstorm. Sorry, it took a bit long, but I've been chomping at the bit. Thanks, Dan. Ke Kelly, that was fantastic. And uh, I commend you on, on your, your efforts and all you do for the island economy. We will uh, most definitely um, stay in touch as we move yeah. forward. And I think uh, what might be a good idea is uh, that Island Good could um, probably um, facilitate a, a, a round table around transportation and logistics and invite a lot of the right people to the table and see whether we can't um, uh, get something going um, yeah. in the short term as opposed to 12, yeah. 18 and months it, And I know that it comes across as a bit of a sales pitch and I apologize for that, but honestly, I'm trying, we've been trying to develop something. We, we haul groceries for all the big boys, Maple Leaf, Sunrise, Lilydale. Those are the guys we want to pay for our services. The island uh, companies and stuff, we want those to be able to piggyback off of those, um, those shipments and stuff. And, um, and we're connected with all kinds of different companies, whether it's going all the way to Toronto or anywhere uh, necessary. Um, so we just need to leverage some of that. The problem that I've always had is trying to get everybody organized. You know, there'll be, you know, um, Marie, I was looking at your mustards and I'm going, how come this isn't in our grocery? Or like, we have a, um, 25,000 SKUs in our warehouse. Why don't I have that in here? I never even heard of it before. And I, then I went on your site today to buy it. And I went, okay, I can order one jar and pay $10. And you've got free shipping, which is fantastic. But I'm thinking, how do you make money when you're doing that? Anyways, so my brain just started going, I, and yet I want your mustard. So it's like, anyways, I, things like that. The last little thing that I really want to say about, everybody mentioned the three-day supply of food. That came from a discussion I had with the Minister of Agriculture many years ago when BC Ferries went on strike. And... But I want to clarify that a little bit because I keep hearing this all the time. It keeps getting <laughs> said, dry goods, uh, tons of. We're, we've got, a, you know, I mean, there's lots of that in all the warehouses on this island now. There's plenty of dry goods. The um, frozen, I mean, between what Sobeys, Cisco, Cold Star has, it's, we're fine there. Um, you know, we have months of supply of all that sort of stuff. Where we have a three day supply is in produce, depending on the time of year. Uh, but produce and in fresh meats and seafoods. Those products are all shipped to, for the most part. There's a few uh, suppliers like Hardy Boys and things like that, but, um, but most of that. So I always want to be clarifying, like if, if there was a natural disaster, it's not like we're all going to starve in three days, but we do need to improve the, the, the what is grown on this island? How come we don't have more greenhouses um, and things like that uh, to be more sustainable? Um, and then that in turn reduces our carbon footprint, which is a massive thing as well. That's my that's my soapbox, but I will put on the chat there my actual uh, email and phone number. And please feel free to reach out to me. I'm very passionate about this stuff. So thanks. Thanks, Kelly. I'm going to go over to Suzanne for a minute because um, I, I think she wants to share a little bit more about our community partnerships and, and connections. Following up that enthusiasm, Kelly, and Cold Star Solutions, and because that Kelly mentioned, are both island good businesses. So one thing that we really are authentic about and what we really want to stay true to our roots, our grassroots, is that we work and support island good businesses um, as that entity. So um, that is kind of bringing me to the community partnership conversation you know, there is economic development leaders and municipalities that can really help small business out in their communities and they're looking for solutions and they see this value in Island Good. And I just want to give a shout out to the city of Campbell River. They really were one of the, and their ECDA, they were really one of the first to see a value in kind of saying, we have this much money that we want to put towards a community partnership. And those businesses that want to on, onboard with Island Good, 
we believe in this. And so it helps to build that because let's be honest, like everybody is mindful where they're putting money these days as well. Still, you know, we're, we're not out of this crunch. So, you know, we've got city of Campbell River, Couch and Valley Economic Development, the city of Langford, Port Alberni, I know they're on the call here, uh, Sydney BIA, the Victoria BIA and the Women's Enterprise Center. And these are partnerships that they've said, we wanna help our small businesses out. So, um, you know, we really encourage anybody to take it to your local leaders too and say, this is, there is funding out there. And if we can't access it directly as Island Good, there are ways we have conduits. Um, and I really, you know, that, that distribution and logistic challenge, we hear you loud and clear and, you know, following up on what Dan said about a really initiating a round table. We're here. Actually, Kelly and I are going to meet next week and talk about how we can roll this all out to you guys because, you know, it is your business and, and it is our business. So we're going to do great things together. Thanks, Suzanne. Um, does anybody have uh, any additional comments or those that posed questions? Did you get a sufficient answer or do you want to revisit anything? I don't, Sharon, is that a hand up? Yeah, um, just when we were talking about where in, in response to where you'd like to see Island Good be in um, another 12, 18 months. One thing that I would love to see, and I don't know how possible it is, but is dedicated uh, grocery aisles with Island Good products. Uh, there's probably feasibility and logistical issues with that obviously some products need to be cold and some you know shelf stable but I remember in the UK and this was going back uh, back into the 90s there was one particular supermarket and it was always kind of touted as the local supermarket and they had that and it was great you could you know you wanted to go support local you could go to that one aisle and see everything was local um, you know however far the radius was and I would love to see that because being a busy person myself, I want to support as much local um, as I can because, you know, I'm an entrepreneur and have my own business. But sometimes logistically that's hard. So another step from, from you know, having the Island Good brand but dotted all around the, the stores would be really nice to, to have something that's um, much more together if possible. Yeah, um, thanks. And that's a that's a wonderful idea, and would go a long way to um, increase uh, our sales by concentrating um, displays. Uh, what kept us from doing it originally, and is probably still in in the way, is that um, all stores have their own planograms. Uh, the large stores that are in more places. Uh, they're not going to alter their planogram based on something that's happening on on the island, and and there, it's also valuable re, real estate. That end aisle is worth at least twenty thousand dollars a week, uh, and that's why you'll see Cokes and uh, and the big brands there. Uh, but you know the way through that is that. Eventually, if you can get strong enough consumer demand, they will win, right? The retailer will always eventually do what their consumers want. Uh, we just need to get a, a loud enough voice and a big enough share of market to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know, guys. Uh, we can either fill the time allotted or just call it quits and uh, which is would be my idea unless anybody has anything else they want to talk about yeah. no more questions going once oh sorry yeah. <laughs> i just really want to thank everybody for this um it's you know the strength in numbers and kelly that was super exciting what you had to share with us and suzanne um your enthusiasm is phenomenal and encouraging and energizing and um the fact that we're all here together with this common goal is just fantastic and 
makes me really excited. So thank you, everybody. Yeah, thanks. And yes, thank you all for participating. Thank you, people who have joined in our um, uh, moving the cause forward. This is a this is something I do purely as a, a volunteer. It's a labor of love of mine, and uh, I'm just thrilled to see um, how well we're doing and where we might go in in the future. So, Dan, uh, I'd like to say thank you as well. Oh, thank you to all of you for all your help, and Suzanne too. It's a pleasure to work with all of you and all the other licensees. It's been great to be part of the panel. Awesome. All right, everybody, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.